welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul Dirienzo, and we have a great show in store for you. Our guest, Byron Duckwall. Welcome, Byron. Thank you very much, All Paul. Right. And, uh, and he's actually brought his instrument, which he's going to talk about, and the fact that he teaches it, but he's also performing, of all places, Carnegie Hall. And I, I knew that. <laughs> and uh, he's playing a soiree of romantic favorites together with Katja Greneva, who's often been uh, numerous times a guest on this program, who plays who's a pianist, world-renowned pianist, who plays every year at Christmas and many other times at Carnegie Hall. And so is this the first time you're both playing together? No, no, no. I, I, at, for, at Carnegie Hall, I mean. I'm sure no, no. It. This is the third oh, is uh, uh, season oh. in a row we've played there. Oh, great, great. I didn't know that. So great, here's a picture of the both of you together, so people can see it. And here's your, your teaching method, which is sort of interesting too. We'll talk about that. So we'll talk a, more, a lot more about this. So uh, you play, uh, let's talk about your instrument for a second. Okay. You play what? Cello. A cello, <laughs> right. And uh, what is a cello? Well, well cello is a string instrument in the same family as the violin family. Mm -hmm. It's the deeper of the violin instruments. Some people think it's like a bass, but it's not because mm. the bass is part of a different family of instruments. Really? Yeah, it's part of the VA family. This is, this is, I mean, the uh, viol family, and this is the VA family, which is the rounded shoulders. If you look at a bass, it's always yeah. has sloped shoulders, and with the cello, the violin, the viola are all uh, rounded shoulders. No More idea. like a That's human body kind of. And that changes the sound, the tone of it, or something. Is that, or is it? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The, yeah. I don't know. The, uh, well, it has a different role because the bass, together with like percussion, sort of sets the right the tempo. But the cello is a is a lead instrument. Right, I but but there it. is an equivalent. You see, uh, they have a, there's something called the viola da gamba, mm -hmm. and I'll, we play on the cello a lot of viola da gamba pieces, but that's part of the of viola family, which is. So mm -hmm. the viola da gamba is related to the bass, but oh. not the cello. So it's like a whole family of Right, them. exactly. Right. So it's and different. They, almost like from and one And that's fretted. Way to that's fretted, whereas all yeah. these are unfretted. Wow. So um, how long have you been playing the cello for? Oh, it's since I was a really young child, like uh -huh. seven right. or something. How did you learn you, you love this instrument of all? You well, know, you know. <laughs> your family obviously noticed you had your, <laughs> well, your, no, whoever my, was in my charge father, of you. My father yeah. loved the cello. My yeah. father played the cello. I but see. he was a conductor, but his main love of instruments was the cello. Right. But he did play almost every instrument in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. and it, was, it was amazing. He could go and pick up uh. a, a bassoon, an oboe, a, a bass, a cello, a violin, a percussion instrument. He could play all of them. It's like a mathematical mind. Right? Uh, it, it, I, I don't music and mathematics go together. You see, uh, yes, like Einstein played Ab violin. Absolutely, and, that yeah, goes together. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, high level. But but, but in, in a different way than you might think. It's more, it's more, rather than sort of the calculating uh, left brain mind, it's not that mind. It's the in intuitive part of mathematics, the higher mathematics that mm -hmm. music's more right. akin to. Okay. You know, like someone improvising jazz, right. would, that would be more like the math, or Bach improvising. Mm -hmm. I see. Know? Very interesting. So uh, let's tell you, you're performing, uh, th this performance, the soiree of romantic favorites is going to be Wednesday, next Wednesday, September 26th, yep. 8 p.m. at uh, Carnegie Hall, right? right? right. And uh, let's see, you're going to play, what are you going to play? I, I could say it, but let's see, why don't you tell Well, me? We're, yeah. we're playing uh, uh, exactly what it says. We're playing uh, a Brahms, um, and actually this is the first time that Katya and I have played Brahms together, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a fantastic piece of music. The Brahms' first cello sonata, E minor. Uh -huh. It's very interesting because um, Brahms was 29 years old. He wrote it in 1862. Mm -hmm. And it's a pivotal piece in, in hi the history of all of his pieces. Yeah. Because it was at that point that before he had been quite wild, quite young, youthful yeah. in his compositions. And this piece marked the start of all the great pieces. It's like it just yeah. coalesced. Mm -hmm. And this piece was the first of all the great right. pieces by Brahms. He found his voice. He found his voice, he just matured, and, right. and this piece was okay. in, in 1862. Right, so, okay, so that'll be, so you're gonna have, play, is that gonna be, do you play, in a, in, in, when, it, when classical music is, is performed, do you play the, the big, the, the crowd stopper at the beginning, middle, or end? Well. For example, in a rock show, it's always at the end, yeah, right? Yeah, right, well, I, w I would say people, 
it, it, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I, I didn't expect that question. But it's like sometimes you want to end with something completely touching and beautiful, you see. So you might do both things. You might end what well, definitely the Brahms is mm -hmm. big, big are, ending, that's the one big ending. To see. But and it's a big piece yeah. altogether. It's a lot to have in your fingers. But then right after it, we play this mm -hmm. gorgeous, you right. know, piece by Sansons, yeah, which might be the one to go out on. That's right. The, and right. so sometimes, yeah. sometimes that, that those pieces, the tender, super sweet um, mm -hmm. pieces, are the ones that move people the most yeah. Interesting. but we but you we do them both you can do them both you don't want to put mm -hmm. two crowd pleaser bombastic big ending ones right after right, each other right exactly so you you make it so that i made that mistake myself and other things and it's <laughs> like you listen to it and you say oh my god i gotta cut one of those out right right i right. say kill your darlings in writing they right, say, exactly, right exactly right exactly you have to kill your darlings sometimes a very hard thing to do right, right. you love two pieces right oh, i'll just play both of them no you can't you have to be very cog cognizant of what the audience's experience is going through the entire kind mm -hmm. of flow or story right. of the program, you know. Exactly. Very interesting. I'm fascinated by that, by that subject in general. Uh, so, all right, great. Byron Duckwall, um, so you're, we want to talk about your teaching, the Dunas Method. You're a teacher. You oh, yes. Teach, but at a high level. I mean, do you teach, yeah. like, little kids when they're first, like, getting their fingers I teach all, all the things, but I have some s super high-level people that study with me. So I, I know this is a very unique method. And so I have even professors at Juilliard that will mm -hmm. take lessons with me at, because it helps their teaching. Did you study the method from the teacher directly? Uh, my, or my teacher was the principal student of, of Demetrius Dunas, who was the okay. originator of the method. Uh, I'm well, looking at this card right here. This is And Dunas was like, he's like <coughs> Einstein of string playing. Uh -huh. Like he, he observed things, saw things, understood things that no one had ever seen, mm -hmm. observed, or understood before. I see. And he could just reveal them. In, and what was amazing about him was he had the ability to, to, to put it in a form that you could, you could literally grasp it and make it part of your playing. And the way he did that is very interesting. He did it by, um, he said the secret of virtuosic technique is that you employ more and more and more your actual native instincts. Mm -hmm. The things that you don't have to learn. But you already know how to do things right. that you learned when you were a baby. Native even, instincts. What are native instincts? I'll give you an in, example. In, for the cello. <laughs> you don't probably remember, I don't uh, remember, wh when I learned how to pick up an object. When I, when I learned to stand up or, or sit down or walk or these. That's like pre-verbal. You're so young. You don't remember it. But now, but you know how to do it, and anybody anybody can pick up a glass of water or a mobile sure. phone, right. and and you, and I and I have people do this all the time in lessons. I say, well, how did you do that? How did you do it? How did you pick that up? Yeah. You see, and 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 they'll say, well, I, I you know they give these descriptions, and we always come back to the same things. They'll notice eventually, through through mm -hmm. going the, through this dialogue, that they always pick it up with their fingertips. They always pick it up in a balanced manner. Mm -hmm. So they don't pick it up at the end of the object. They pick it up, they conform their hand to the shape of the object, uh -huh. and then they, in and, and some place where it'll That's naturally your mind, be balanced. Like, connecting your, your mind sees like you pick the up a pencil, you usually pick it up in the middle where it yeah. just naturally would be balanced. And you see, you need to do all right, those things right. when you hold the bow. Right. So like you, you have a bow, you, you, you don't want to hold the bow in some odd way that's not completely balanced. Completely. Uh, I get it. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. So you have. To, how do you take all those native instincts? Yeah. Like the ability to just rub something or touch something smooth. Or how do you take those things and put it into playing? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what Dunas was. Right. A genius. As I was at. saying earlier, it reminded me of uh, the King's Speech, right. a way of teaching language and, and pronunciation and enunciation that was used out of the box methods. Right. Out and yet, the one that yeah. worked, there was one that uh, worked, sure. which is the one where he's listening to the music, you see. So Dunas would have picked up on that right, right away, and that right. would have been the, what he right. would have recommended to that right. person, you see. Great. Well, uh, Byron, do you want to show us how this all comes together in okay, a performance, sure. in a sure. piece of music? This is great. So we're going to, this is great. We have a, a live cello performance by one of the top cellists at Carnegie Hall, and uh, a great teacher as well.
So this is a, uh, I'm just going to play the melody from one of the pieces we're going to play, which is uh, probably one of the most famous mel uh, melodies that uh, Rachmaninoff ever wrote. Mm -hmm. And it's called Vocalise. Okay. Make sure I don't hit oh. you there. <laughs> 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 Byron Duckwall, <laughs> thank you so much for that thank wonderful you. performance, one of the great performances we've ever had on this program, and we've had a lot of great ones too, so that was great. Some time ago, um, I remember we had two cello players. Really? Two That's women. Yeah, cool. and they were part of a, um, I, it'll come back to me the name of the performance, but uh, it was four Steinway grand pianos, three Steinway grand pianos, and a whole line of cello players. Wow. And they were all good, like good ones. Huh. And and they played this wild thing that was specially written for oh. three grand pianos wow. and six cellos. Wow, that sounds amazing. <laughs> it was like some planned thing or something. That sounds crazy. And they did it in a big, a big um, over at the uh, World Trade Center, at the um, the World Financial Center in the back there, that huge out open area they have. It was really nice. It was, it, 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 so I just, we talked a little bit about cellos and that program. That reminded me mm. of cellos being like, 
I mean, when was that made? Well, my, my, my good cello, this is, I have two cellos. One of them um, is very old and is a, an old, made by a master uh, craftsman, and one is a modern one. This is my modern one, mm -hmm. and I switch. Uh -huh. um, my friend uh, Juilliard, uh, Professor Juilliard friend, he also has two instruments. One is a uh, Stradivarius, and the other is, <coughs> is also a uh, modern instrument. Right. So today I'm playing on this one, and uh, at the concert I'm going to play on my other one, which is was made in 1800 mm -hmm. by Thomas Dodd, who's probably in Covent Garden in England, and, and is probably the most uh, famous of all the English makers, or one of the most famous of all mm -hmm. the English makers. So what is modern is in the last century? Or modern would be, yeah, anything, yeah, that's, that's, past that, the 50s or at, something. Past 1930 or something okay, right. would be modern. Right. Now, what's awesome. the difference? Are, are the, the older one is what you play Carnegie Hall with, and the yeah. modern one is what you played Manhattan. Yeah, but <laughs> I, but I do both. I played, I, I played, uh, uh, I played yeah, big I concerts that. on this one and yeah. big. Oh, really? Yeah, really? yeah. Uh -huh. There's not. They're, they have different qualities, mm -hmm. and I mean, I love the the other one. It's it's very rich. Uh -huh. This one's a little bit more robust, and uh, I mean, it just have they have different qualities. I see, right? And and you so there's two that you have, and yeah. Right, that's great. And what do you practice on mostly when you practice? Uh, usually on on the, oh, I practice on both, but uh, but I I usually practice on the on my mm -hmm. other jaw. That's how you got the Carnegie Hall, I imagine. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> By practicing, well, you know the right? old joke, right? Right, but it's a it's a truism. Right? It's beyond a joke. It's true. Did you know? Do you actually know that story? Who, who, how it actually? No, okay, I don't. Well, it, it was it was we told about y Yasha Heifetz. Really? Yeah, Heifetz was had had a rehearsal at Carnegie and he was walking he was a couple blocks down from sure. Carnegie and some tourist came up and said said excuse me sir how do you get to Carnegie get home he says thought about it for a second he says practice <laughs> As the guy with a sense of humor. Right? Yeah, right. Well, he's also the one of the greatest violinists right? ever lived. Uh, yeah, violinists are right. you, right? Um, so, okay, great. So, okay, the show, so the program is at Carnegie Hall. It's this Wednesday, September 26th at 8 p.m. at the Wild Recital Hall. And uh, information is on, uh, you, could, uh, you could call Carnegie Charge. Call Carnegie right. Hall, carnegiehall.org. And the box office is at 57th and 7th, so you guys know what to do. And um, and it's going to be a, a, a duet, I guess, a dual performance. Right. Uh, Byron Duckwall playing right. the cello, as we just heard, and Katja Graneva playing the piano, of course. And she's, if you've been a regular listener of this or viewer of this program, you know that she's been right. here a few times talking about She's Carnegie brilliant. Hall. Yeah. She's totally brilliant. Yes, yes. And uh, we've had wonderful conversations. Love to have her here. And so it's great that the two of you are performing together. Is that a, a once, is that something you guys, I mean. We do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. We do it all the time. We've all done right. it all over. Do you, do you travel with her when she goes to Africa and all these places? Uh, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to go to Africa. <laughs> The flight was just that, that I, but so I mean, I, I might go. Yeah. I, I have said that I, I, I will uh, hold that possibility open, but right. I didn't want to right. get on, you know, 24 hours. It's a lot of, uh, just a yeah. lot of drinking. But I, you know, I've gone, we played <laughs> yeah. all over the United yeah. States and, mm -hmm. and other places and, you know, right, everywhere right. in the Caribbean and everywhere. Sure, great. And what's what is the soiree of romantic favorites? What 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 does that mean? What is the uh, well theme? well first of all, a soiree of course just means a, you know an evening intimate performance, sure. and and we we've called the series of concerts we've done for the last three years. Mm -hmm. Everyone's a soiree, okay. so each time it was a, a different soiree. So the first mm -hmm. one and then last year it was an we called it an evening meditation. Mm -hmm. All the music was very meditative. This one was just these really wonderful romantic pieces that mm, we just completely sure. love. Um, and we did, and then we did all French music, and then we did that, and we uh, sometimes we'd do it in conjunction right. with an album. Right. Like we had done all okay. the French. If you go to, um, to my website or to her website, katiacds.com or masterthecello.com, Master the, of the Cello. Masterthecello.com. Right, because you and teach this instrument yeah, as well. that's right. And right. it's, that's all about that. But also the, all the CDs and mm -hmm. stuff that we've done together. So I, you see, I, I met Katya many, a long time ago, like 20, like 1994 or something. Right. And I did the first album. I was kind of the one who discovered her. Uh -huh. you know? I and I did the first so album with her, yeah. second album with her. And we, now we've done like five or six albums together. Yes. So... 
great since then. So you've been performing since those years. So you, you know No, we didn't other. actually perform right uh -huh. away. At first, I was just producing. I found her, and I was a producer, and I uh -huh. produced her at mm -hmm. first. And then, and then in recent years, like, you know, like five years ago or something, yeah. we started playing together. Right. And, uh, I mean, we played a little bit together here and there, but we didn't. Not mm. like now when we actually Perform seriously play. Of the yeah, like of lots of yeah. people. Sure. I mean, we play concerts mm -hmm. all the time. Right. So, yeah. So that that was a new development. And plus, I've also sometimes conduct, and right. she, and uh, I conduct, and she'll play right. a concerto. Well, with that's her. great. But sometimes that can be tough. I mean, the, let's say the last thing you can you should do is like teach somebody to drive who you you know very well. You know, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But you got it made it work. Oh no, totally. Right. To, to, I, she's a pleasure to play with because. She's such an intuitive musician, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm also that way. I mean, I'm very, I think about everything, but I right. also it all comes down. Well, ultimately, you always open her shows. I mean, you're out there, either sometimes with a performance, right. a short performance, or definitely you describe what's happening. Oh yeah, right. I you, do that you, too. You set the tone. I do of that. The whole I do event. that. And there's always an education. I know Katya is very into the education and bringing children right. to come see the events. And there's Definitely. always lots of children at these events. And there will be at this, this one too. Right. And and you're a teacher. Is that a connection there? Yes. That yes. Well. See, the, 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 with with children, uh, it's they have the, essentially the same issues that you would if you were start studying when you're older. Mm -hmm. The difference is that the native instincts in the child are easier to just pull right out and then start employing in the playing. Mm -hmm. I so see. I like I like working with children, especially ones that are really serious right. and committed about it. And and then you can do you can really literally perform miracles. Like uh -huh. you like you look you can't believe it's the same. First child playing the, at one point as it was when they originally right. came. So they start with the squeaky, not uh, slippery all over the place, and then you come by six months you know, later and they're playing it. It, 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 it can happen. See, see the, the interesting thing about this Dunas method is uh -huh. that it isn't something where you sort of incrementally learn and there's this cu long cu cumulative process. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into playing well, but if you employ one of these principles, the principles of playing that are completely natural, and, and you know how to draw them out through this method, yeah. um, the, the result is instant. Right. It instantly works. Right. So, and then, what, the only cure like the old guy who plays, like, he's in, they discover him in, in Alabama somewhere, and he's playing unbelievable, right. and he gra jumped, dropped out of third grade, and can't read music, and, right. but he just picked up that guitar, what do they say? Right. Uh, it just rings it like ringing a bell, right? Right. It's it is interesting though that when the real principles of, of teaching are right, there it isn't like this thing that it's mm -hmm. just it like I've seen it, God knows, hundreds of times, mm -hmm. and I would watch a student that's playing for me some difficult passage. So I, I teach violinists as well as cellists, yeah. okay. and the violinists will be playing. Do you play some, violin as well? No, no, I just play cello, but but I teach violin. Principles, well. some similar principles. Very, very, um, almost ninety, over ninety percent is the same. Uh -huh. So, so they're playing for me, and they can't play a passage, and they've been working on it for years. Right. And I say, well, you know, I think I can solve this in uh -huh. like five or ten minutes. And they look, they think you're crazy. Right. So and it's then, like the whisperer. You're whispering. Right. Them. It yeah. is exactly like that. And it's all, it's in the bo the mind, the mind body connection. Right. Well, see, performing is both. I noticed your Woodstock uh, uh, T-shirt. <laughs> the mind, mind body connection would be well uh, but it's it's just think about the, the reality of it it's it's not only an artistic event it's an yeah. athletic event so it's both part sport part mm -hmm. art sure. I see put you. together at the same time right. and the athletic part has to be right if it's not the right they're moving the finger moving how the they how it that yeah. works right. and that's where you want to be natural wow. so if you're doing some odd thing with this then all these Everything can go haywire. Right? I'll give, want me to give you an example? Yes. Okay. So let's say you're playing. If you see a beginner playing a cello or violin or something, sure. they're, they're playing like this. You know, it's like they play like this. Yeah. <laughs> like this. <laughs> no, you see well. the arm, yeah. the impulse in the arm is, 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 is here in the arm, uh -huh. whereas the impulse has to be in the hand. The hand is like a conductor, you see. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the thing that communicates the emotion. Sure. The subtleties of, of your voice, your inter interpretation into the instrument. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so I would go over and I grab their arm. They can't move, okay. and then I force them to play that little piece with just their hand. Right. And a couple seconds later, without telling them anything mm -hmm. about the music, 
That's what they, they call sound us in way high better. School. Use well, your wrist. Use your well, wrist. Well, right? your your fingers, your hands are how you how you relate to the entire world. Yeah. You know, it's like all your arm is only a way to get your hand where it wants to go. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's sort of like that's that. athletic. That's what is in a baseball, soccer, uh, volleyball. It's always they always say it's not the arm; it's in the wrist. And it's all the little details of it, like you. Uh, like you have to approach the string as though you're you're gonna touch a, a, a um, soapstone counter or something, mm -hmm. you know, a granite counter. You your hand automatically goes like this, you see, yeah. before it touches the su smooth surface. The same thing has to occur when you're holding a bow and you touch the string. If you do, then you get this silky sound. I can't, I'm gonna run out and get a cello and start yeah. practicing. I'll drive my neighbors crazy. Uh, great. We have a couple of minutes. Would you like to go out with something? Sure. Just sure. like a, a two minutes. Some Bach, maybe. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. We can just go right out to the end. So this is Let Them Talk, and uh, we have Byron Duckwall who's with us, and uh, he'll be performing with Katja Graneva next Wednesday at Carnegie Hall at 8 p.m. So look it up at CarnegieHall.org. Cool. This is from the first Bach cello. So it's one of the most famous pieces by Bach for cello. Sure. Anytime you want. Great. At least you got a little bit We're of it. Done. Yeah, yeah, no, we got it.